They come from around the world. They are the strong, the fit, the men and the women that keep us safe. They are firefighters, and they're here today to compete in the toughest two minutes in sports and to see who will be crowned world champion. Hotel, Casino, and Tower in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, it is the Scott boy. Firefighter Combat Challenge World Challenge 22. Hey, Hi, everybody. Yeah. I'm Bob Ramsey, alongside my partner, Maria Prekajis. And today is the culmination of what has been a grueling week for these competitors. It has been a tough week for sure. Over 600 firefighters from around the world competed all week. Today, it's the best of the best. We will crown an individual male and female world champ, as well as a team champion. It's going to be a good one. Now, let's bring in the third member of our team, Dr. Paul Davis, who also happens to be the creator of the Scott Firefighter Combat Challenge. Paul, how did all this get started? The Firefighter Combat Challenge is the only internationally televised and touring sports event that has its origins in a university laboratory. Back in the 70s, while at the University of Maryland Sports Medicine Center, we received a federal grant to study firefighting. The tasks that we use to measure oxygen uptake and other physical fitness measures are the same ones that you're going to be seeing here today. Over 500 firefighters from around the world will be out here testing their medal against the toughest two minutes in sports. Thanks a lot, Paul. One of the great things about this course is that every piece is here for a reason. It is. There are five stages. I might add very grueling stages. We do call it the toughest two minutes in sports. And they really represent what these firefighters do every day to save lives. Let's take an in-depth look at this course. And it all begins at the tower. Everything you see here, Bob, is high fidelity. It's an exact replication of things that firefighters do every day. This simulates climbing stairs with a high-rise pack. That's a 42-pound load of uh, shoulder hose. Hoisting, working with ropes is another essential part of being a firefighter, having a grip strength. Your working uh, interface is through your hands. The grip and upper body strength needed here is unbelievable. Yes, it is. I mean, people's lives depend upon your ability to hang on, grasp, and pull. Of course, coming down the stairs, you have to touch every step on the way down. Walk 20 feet, pick up the nine pound shot mallet, drive the 160 pound beam a distance of five feet. This simulates using a hand tool and ax for a forceful entry. Then you're gonna walk to the other end of the course, which is 140 feet, weaving your way around the hydrants and grasp the attack line. That's an inch and three quarter attack line. And you're gonna pull that a distance of 75 feet. When you get that fully stretched out, you're pulling 240 pounds. You're gonna direct the nozzle once through the doors at a target, drop the guillotine, and then the last, the killer event, which is the human tractor pull, 175 pound rescue Randy, a distance of 106 feet until you cross over the finish line. That is the meat grinder of a course, and the competitors are ready to attack. When we come back, the top competitors will take to the course, so don't go away. The Scott Firefighter World Challenge 22 is brought to you by Scott Safety, a Tyco business protecting what matters most. Jeff Emery is the marketing director for Scott Safety, and Jeff, it is called the Scott Firefighter Combat Challenge. For 20 of the 22 years, you have been the presenting sponsor. Why this event? Well, Scott Safety is the world's leading supplier of self-contained breathing apparatus, which is the uh, mask that you see firefighters wearing each and every day. So it's a natural fit for us, but more than that, Scott is a safety company, and there is a direct tie between firefighter fitness and safety, so that's why we're proud to have been behind this for the last 20 years. Well, we thank you, and remember, it is called the Scott Firefighter Combat Challenge for a reason. All right, it's time for our first heat. We've got Mackenzie Briggs from Team SoFlo. He'll be taking on Justin Cooperus on the red course. Justin is from Hamilton Fire. Mackenzie's quite a veteran in the combat challenge, Bob. He's run 10 sub 90, wow. which is quite an accomplishment. His best time was when he ran in World Challenge 19 in Myrtle Beach in 2010. He ran a 129 at that time. His wife is also 
a competitor. They yes. keep it in the family. Yeah, they met. They met at the challenge. As a matter of fact, uh, he is uh, also a uh, mixed martial art competitor. And as they come out of the tower, pretty even. Both these guys are members of the exclusive Lions Den. These are for competitors who uh, have hit certain time criteria. It's our version of a varsity club. Mackenzie Briggs on the blue. It looks like Justin Cooperus has a couple of step lead. Yes, he does. Let's see if Mackenzie can close it up. Well, he is really moving. It looks like he is just a little behind. And here we go, the final stretch, the dummy drag. Well, I got to tell you, Bob, that is the longest 100 feet on the face of this earth. Justin Cooperus. The big, the big trouble, struggle is to try to maintain your focus and maintain terminal velocity. Cooperus wins with his first ever sub 90. What a great way to start off the day. Coming up next, we'll find out who will be the world champion for the women. Will Amber Bowman get her third individual title? More action after this. The Scott Firefighter World Challenge 22 is brought to you by Scott Safety, a Tyco business protecting what matters most. Welcome back, it's time for the women's championship. Carla Penman from Vancouver and Amber Bowman from Ontario have been neck and neck all week and Maria caught up with them earlier today. Amber Bowman is the two-time reigning world champion. Amber, a lot more women in the field this year. What's it going to take to get that hat trick? Oh, it's going to take a lot of effort uh, mentally, uh, bringing your A game on your final day. Uh, all I can do is focus on my PR and try to PR, obviously, individually. And, then uh, you know, bring your A game to, to that final two minutes, basically. Uh, Ten months of training, putting it all together on that final day. Um, and, obviously, there's awesome competition this year. Better, um, better, bigger, stronger, faster females, and a lot more of them from various countries, which is awesome in the top 12. So looking forward to, to the challenge. Yeah, well, Amber and I know each other well. We've raced uh, in the Canadian Nationals twice. So, you know, on game day, uh, I don't think we talk at all when we're racing each other. But then, you know, the next day when we're teammates, um, you know, we're just we're there for each other. And yeah, we get along great. Well, the ladies finals is coming up next, and it's going to be a good one. Here we go for the championship. Carla Penman is on the blue course. Amber Bowman from Ontario on the red. And Amber Bowman has so many rings and so many trophies. She is a giant in this business. Well, she's got seven world championships to start with. Two female individuals, two co-ed tandems, two female tandems, and one female relay championship. So Amber's looking to add one to the trophy case. She's also a hockey player in the Canadian Women's League. The former Ohio State Buckeye. Yeah, she was a uh, scholastic athlete, played on the women's hockey team at Ohio State. Now, at 39 years old, Carla Penman is older, and she is very accomplished as well. Yeah, she's got 11 years, basically, on, uh, on Amber. But uh, both these ladies are members of the Lions Den in their own right. You know, also our officials are challenge aficionados or veterans. Uh, Eugene McPeak, uh, formerly a deputy fire chief from Albuquerque, is officiating there on the blue lane. And opposite him, Peter Reed, three-time member of the Brampton championship team, is officiating on the red side. Amber Bowman came out of the tower behind Carla Penman, but made up ground on the Kaiser sled. And now it's the veteran Bowman with all those championships looking to make another one work for her. But she's got a lot more work to do as Penman close behind, only a couple of steps behind on the hose drag. Through the nozzle, through the door, got the uh, target down. First to the rescue, Randy. Does Penman have enough to make a run down the stretch? Good grip on that rescue, Randy. Good velocity. It'll take a spill now to make the difference. Amber Bowman steps away from her eighth championship. Don't to wanna, the finish line. Don't want to look back, Bob. 
I can guarantee you, you turn around, look back, they're gonna fall down. And there it is, your women's champion, Amber Bowman, her eighth overall title, her third straight women's championship. And you know, these two women are on the same relay team. We'll be seeing them tomorrow, Bob. Bowman finishes with a 214.94, shaving seven seconds off her personal best. And Maria had a chance to visit with the champion, Amber Bowman. Well, we can finally say it. Three-time world champion Amber Bowman. All week long, you and Carla neck and neck today. Basically 20 seconds faster. What was the difference? Uh, just training back home, uh, consistently sacrificing a lot and giving up. Can't thank uh, the guys back home in my department, uh, the guys I train with uh, all year long. And really, uh, I kind of surprised myself. I knew I was pushing it in practice and getting lower and lower in my times, but really just bringing it out um, with a mistake-free free race and bringing it all in this awesome weather, and, and it thankfully paid off. Now let's get back to the men's individual action. The time to beat is 128.01 by Justin Cooperitz. It won't be easy. On the blue course from Poland, we have Krzysztof Kravczyk. And on the red course from Shell Scottford ERT, it's Aaron McKenga. High rise packs go in the boxes. Grabbing that 15 millimeter Kern Mantle rope, pulling up that 42 pound donut roll. Up the way it over. flies over the railing. Amazing, you know, it's just uh, an incredible technique to get that much velocity, Bob, and then arc it right over. It's also amazing how the Scott Firefighter Challenge has grown, and you know, we have so many of these races that are truly international, as Kravchuk from Poland really making a great showing here in Las Vegas. Well, and he did also in Berlin, and you know, we were there in September, one of the outstanding athletes at the, uh, at the Berlin event in the European Championships. He's got about a two-step lead right now over Aaron McKenga. Pulling away. Grab check to the hose. You know, it's so fascinating how these leads can sort of seesaw back and forth. Some guys just have, you know, have the strength or they have the lever. Christoph first to the dummy. Here comes McKenga. Can he make up the ground? It's so hard to do in the final stretch, but they're just about neck and neck. Here comes Aaron McKenga. Aaron McKenga's gonna pass Kravchuk. Oh, what a run, a come from behind victory for Aaron McKenga. I can't tell you how hard that is, Bob, to take over the lead at the end of that 106 feet. But the 131.15 still short of Cooper's 128. Now our next heat has John Betts on the blue course, Louis Watteau on the red. Louis from Hamilton, Ontario. Betts is from Wendy's of Fredericton, New Brunswick. Look at the hose hoist, unbelievable from Louis. He's opening up the lead. That was fantastic. Now Louis Boiteau, he is a teammate of Justin Cooperus, who has the aforementioned 128 mark to beat. Yes, they do, and he's, he's neck and neck right now on the force machine. Let's see who gets off the force machine first. There's, looked like Louis. John Betts made up some ground. And only about a step behind. At the hose. Can Betts make up some ground here? Gets heavier as you go. Stretching that line through the saloon doors. Got the target down. Less than a second difference. Betts in the blue. Watteau on the red. Got a slight lead. Watteau, can he hold on? Can he keep the separation? Louis Watteau. Marvelous run, and he beat his teammate, 127-62. When we come back, the final four competitors compete. Will Louis Watteau's time hold up? The Scott Firefighter World Challenge 22 is brought to you by Scott Safety. Welcome back to the Scott Firefighter Combat Challenge. It amazes me every time I see these athletes out here, the dedication it takes to get here. Every sense of the word, Bob, these are world-class athletes. 
We're down to the final four competitors. The time to beat Louis Boiteau at 127.62. And Maria got to speak with last year's world champion. Jamie McGarva is the 2012 reigning world individual champion. Jamie, not such a great week with times. You're not sitting in the top 10. What's it going to take tonight? Oh, it's going to, it's going to take a lot uh, and a lot of perfect running. It, it's a lot of great competitors this year. Every year is great competitors, but it seems every year everybody gets a little bit faster and a little bit faster, uh, but I'm getting older. So <laughs> for me, I have to have a perfect run. I have to lay it all out there and uh, you know, hopefully that'll be enough. The time challenge in front of the next two competitors, Claude Belanger in the blue, Jamie McGarva in the red. They've got to beat 127.62. You know, Jamie's from the West Shore Terminals uh, team out of Delta, British Columbia. Claude's out of Longay, Quebec. These are two very, very evenly matched athletes. And coming down out of the blue, Belanger has the early lead. We've seen it seesaw back and forth throughout the competitions. Well, Jamie's given him 13 years. That's a pretty good difference. But it's not showing up right here on the course. Through the Kaiser, Belanger still with the lead. Winning the heat is not enough. You've got to beat 127-62. Well, Jamie's got a personal record of 123, so he's been in that rarefied air before. And at this point in time, the air does seem rare to those competitors, yes, it does. doesn't it? It does indeed. I mean, it's amazing. You're thinking about these guys are bringing their own air supply to this competition. Not another sport that you do that in. Dummy Dragon, suddenly McGarva's right there with him. He's trailed the entire race, but Jamie McGarva right behind Belanger. A step behind, here they go. To the finish line. And it's Claude Belanger. What a run. 125.89. And Belanger has taken over the lead and has the time to beat. And we'll find out if the next two competitors can do it in the feature race of the day. Maria talked with them both. Sean Henderson has run the fastest time all week amongst some stiff competition. What's it going to take to get that title tonight? Uh, everybody's going to be at their best, so uh, it's probably going to take a time again of uh, 124 or less. Uh, it seems like uh, everybody steps up their game on final day. How do you train it for an event like this mentally and physically? Uh, mentally, uh, just try to prepare the exact same way every race. And, uh, you know, over the years, I've been competing for 10 years now, so it gets a little bit easier mentally, but people don't understand how mentally draining it can be uh, physically. I train uh, on the course, uh, doing uh, course evolutions six months of the year, and then I try to lift weights the other six months, so to, uh, just a little bit of, of a balance. Jeff Leonard is the 2011 world champ. Jeff, you only raced once in 2012, but you are back full speed ahead. You had the second fastest time this week. How badly do you want a second world championship? I would really like to get the team championship this year and uh, run another personal best. Um, that's what it's all about, um, coming out here and doing better than you did the last time. What does it take to prepare for this sport? It's the toughest two minutes in sports. Well, when I really go back and think about it, I kind of want to throw up on my mouth a little bit. It's, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of uh, painful work. So it's good to be here and have all that work behind you and just compete. This match race is set. Sean Henderson on the blue side, Jeff Leonard on the red side. Can they beat the top time of the day? Needs a 124. He's done it before. These two are so evenly matched as they go up the tower. Sean just a little bit ahead. Almost stride for stride on the and, hoist. And then you saw Leonard get it over the rail first, but step for step down the tower. Big game. Oh, 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 Bob. You have you to see hit that? every step. Yeah, he turned. What happened there? Well, it, it looks like he caught his heel and turned sideways. Now he's behind. And it gives Henderson a lead. Yeah. Henderson got a shorter stroke. Notice Jeff's got a lot bigger bang. Henderson's still ahead off the force machine. How do you make up that kind of time? We're uh, talking maybe well, as much as two seconds. Yeah. I mean, we'll see if uh, we'll see if Jeff can make it happen because of his mass and, and, and that dummy, but uh, right now. And Sean Henderson's running a flawless, flawless race. 
Here comes well, Leonard. Here they are. <laughs> and look at him. He Let made up some ground in the last couple of yes, steps. Yes, he did. It's still Henderson, though. It's still Henderson. Can he hold off a late surge by Jeff Leonard? Here comes the defending champion. It looks like he's taking the lead. Out of nowhere, Jeff Leonard's made up for the early mistake. And Jeff Leonard is going to be the champion. Jeff Leonard beats 125. What a race. What a race. He comes from behind to beat the clock and Sean Henderson to become the champion. This is the king of the jungle for World Challenge 22, Bob, and I can't tell you how hard that is at that point in time because every fiber of your body is screaming. There's the mistake we were talking about. You see it on the replay, yet Jeff Leonard was able to overcome it. In his chest beats the heart of a champion. An amazing run with Jeff Leonard crowned world champion. And Maria's down on the course. Jeff Leonard, the world champ. You told me earlier, well, I'm just here for the team. It obviously pushed you enough to get number one. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel great. Uh, I don't know what the team standings are, but I was trying really hard to push for that. And, you know, it ended up getting me the championship, so it's not a bad day. This is a very special sport. Sean Henderson, who you were going up against, one of your best friends. How is that when you're on the course with him? You know, it just it motivates you to go faster. You know, if you slack off at all, he's going to catch you or beat you or whatever. So you got to go out and give it everything you got. Well, you certainly did that. Congratulations to the you. world champion, Jeff Leonard, 125.41. Great time. Thanks. Congrats. The top three runs from each team are added together, and our champion is Team West Shore Terminals, led by Jamie McGarva, edging out world champion Jeff Leonard's Team Hayward by just over two seconds. For our entire CBS Sports Network crew, I'm Bob Ramsey. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.